Welcome back to the next episode in this beginner C++ series. This time we're going to talk about a little bit of additional syntax, how memory basically works and how it's represented, and an introduction to some basic variables. So first of all, let's go ahead and get a main.cpp programmed up. And that way we can start doing our stuff. Now it's it's often a good idea as a new programmer to get used to making new files and get used to making mains. So that's what we're gonna do here. If you see arc v and rc arc c here, uh, let's not worry about those for now. But basically you can pass values into this function. We'll talk about functions later. For now, this will be good enough. Okay. So at the very end of our program, we want to return zero, as we did before. And let's talk a little bit about comments, first of all, because I didn't mention them in the last one, and they're rather important. Comments start with two slashes. They're ignored by the compiler, so only the text files see them. And you can type whatever you want after two slashes, and usually it's about your program or about the lines of code. So at the top of a file, people will often say something like, I don't know, their name or written by or copyright, copyright, code tech and tutorials, let's do this. So that's a comment. You can also do block comments um, with this sort of deal. And then you can just type many lines of things. You can also use those to type in between your code. This is really awkward, I wouldn't recommend this. But you could do something like that and the compiler will ignore this little section. So there you start it and there you end it. So this is two ways of doing comments and C++. And to talk a little bit about memory, well, I'll just type it out here. The main way memory is gonna be represented is as a bit, which is just a single character of a zero or a one representing true or false or yes or no. This is the smallest bit that it can be, hence the name bit. So zero or a one. But usually when it's represented or when people talk about computer memory, they talk about it in a byte. And a byte is eight of these. So that would be a byte of exactly zero value. Now Bytes are often broken up into split sections of four. So you'll notice it's eight. And the reason that is, is because they're often represented with the hexadecimal characters. Uh, hexadecimal is base 16, and it goes from zero to 15. What we're used to is decimal. And uh, decimal is, of course, 0 to 9, or that's base 10. Usually we see it 1 to 10, but as a programmer you get used to starting at 0. So it'll be actually 0 to 9 is our standard decimal format where every single character can be 0 to 9. But since we can't write 10, 10 through 15 in a single character, uh, 10 becomes the letter A. Uh, if I can type an arrow, that would be great. And 11, B, and so on until you get to 15 represented as F. Now, so, and of course there is binary, which is just 0 to 1. So you'll see those talked about in computer science and in programming in general a lot. So the point of me telling you all that is when you see a bit that is just one, that's just a binary zero or one. This is eight of them. So once you get to a bunch of them and you want to represent four at a time so that way you can read them quickly, you represent each four as a hexadecimal character because you'll notice the maximum number of different states in a section of four of these is 16, hence the hexadecimal. So, for example, the maximum state of all ones is represented as an F. So this right here would be represented in hex 
as well to represent to say that it's hex you usually see it as something like a 0x and then a 0 for this first section and this other one would be an F so this would be the exact same as that one there if that doesn't make complete sense I would recommend doing an additional bit of research on the subject it is a uh, the very basics of computer science so you can find all sorts of charts and documentation about uh, this bit of stuff but that should be enough for you to understand the basics now on to variables variables are what's going to be sort of the bread and butter of your program because with them you can start defining logic and making your program do different things and modify variables so let's talk about the simplest one a character so when you declare a variable, first you you write its type, and then you give it a name. And the names can include underscores, letters, caps are fine too, and numbers. But it can't start with a number. It has to start with a character or an underscore, or an alphabetical character. So this is a valid name there but if I throw a one in here it's not it's no longer a valid name I can put underscores generally you want it to define something something that kind of explains what the variable is going to be for so we'll just say this is a demo character in this kind of case style where you start lowercase on the first word and go to uppercase on the next word is called camel case you'll see that very frequently there are other formats too Camel case seems to be the most popular. Like you can also do it this way. Usually I go with character case when in doubt. And then you end your line with a semicolon. So now that is defined. A character takes up one byte. So this could be represented by those eight bits and it's worth noting that it might not necessarily use all of these but computer memory wants to be sectioned up into bytes just because of that easy transferring to hex and there are some other reasons too but that's the simplest way to state it is because you can you can represent any byte as just two hex characters and it's pretty readable once you get used to it and uh, some other ones. Let's talk about some other ones. There's an integer, which is just an int, and I'll call this demo int. And a, an integer is, I believe it's two bytes. I hope I'm not eating my words on that. So it's uh, around this size. And actually, you, we can test. So when you're, I'll do a few others here and I will correct my comments or you can leave a comment below and, and yell at me uh, there's also two bytes I guess it would be plural and there's also a double so these are that's a floating point number this is a bigger floating point number that you'll see when you need more precision precision there just line these up all nice okay so a cool thing we can do if you want to see the size which can come in handy sometimes is you can do a size of operation so we're going to chain a few of these to get together do a size of with parentheses and then a end line we're going to little do control d and visual studio code copies your line we're going to say these sort of doing this in an inefficient way I could have just pasted it twice rather than eight times or you know four times total you probably know what I'm saying and we'll put a space here so that it's not right next to it but this size of operation will spit out the size in bytes by default so if we run this so let's go ahead and compile this with G++ main.cpp Oh, and we have an error. 
and I guess I just didn't save or something. So there was no actual error there. And there we go. And I was wrong about these entirely. These are four. This is eight. Okay, so that's a whole lot more. There we go. So the character, yes, is one. The integers and floats are four. There's other types of integer. If you want an integer that can go even higher, you can go. You can do a long int or a long, long int. Those can also be represented as int 16 underscore t. Oops, I get control minus there. Or there's also 32 and even 64. And these numbers can just go larger, but they'll take up more bytes. So, for example, if I run this now, our demo int, oops, let me recompile it, our demo int is now going to be 8 for the 64 bit space. And if we do a 32, I think that's the default. Just a plain int is an int 32. Yep. But check this out. If we go to an int 16, which is half the size, so it will only take up two bytes. Pretty cool, huh? So that can come in handy. You can find these limits. Uh, I don't have them pulled up in front of me right now, but basically they are, they don't, you can't go quite as far with them. And then the smallest one, the int eight, is just a single byte and it only goes to 256. So if you only need small numbers and you know that you'll never overflow, you can save a little bit of memory and make your program just a tiny bit faster by using a smaller variable. All right, well, now that you know about the basics of variables and how to see their sizes, you should also know how to set them as values. A character you set as a value with an equals and uh, single quotes, and you can set it to any character on your keyboard pretty much. And integers, of course, you can set to any integer within its limit, and you can find those limits. I'm gonna just go just go right to the best reference site here. This is the site you want to go to if you have any questions. If you go here, you can look about everything about C++. And we're looking at just plain old ints, int type, and you'll see lots of information about it. Now some of this might be really confusing looking at first, um, but as you get more proficient with C++, this will start looking more familiar. But what we're looking for here is, uh, let's see, you'll be able to find the max value somewhere on here. Here we go. This chart right here shows it. Integer, a 32-bit one, and signed is the default. So just a plain int is a signed 32-bit int, but you can do an unsigned int, and as you can see, it holds no negative numbers if it's unsigned. It holds plus or minus if it's signed, and there's the max size of that 32-bit int. And you can look at these for whatever type you want. So you can get your ranges and make sure you stay within range. So now I've shown you that site. I think you'd be able to reference anything else you might be doing in your program. Floating point number, of course, has a uh, following, something following a decimal. It doesn't have to, but um, also you can just put a dot F there to note that it's a float. And doubles about the same looking as a float, but it can just hold larger values. And there we go. So you don't necessarily have to assign them when you declare them, but it's usually a good idea. Usually, when people initially create them, they assign them them to zero. And the reason why is different compilers will do different things with them. Some compilers may assign them to zero to start. Other compilers might just give them a random value or whatever happens to be in that memory location at the time. So you can get some varying results if you don't initialize them. Now, once they are assigned, you can always reassign them by referencing them again by just typing the name and giving it a new value. And you can do that likewise with all the other types. 
All right, I think that pretty well covers variables and the basics of variables. If you have any questions, leave them below. Please leave a like if you want to help this channel and help my videos. It helps recommend. It helps tell YouTube's algorithm that uh, my videos are, you know, watchable, I guess. So, appreciate that, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.